The following program is sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. Good morning. Welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, a Health Mart pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We're glad you joined us. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Mercy Medical Center, Studio Barts and Glass, and of course, our technical producer today is John Bazika. In the studio with me is Brad White, a compounding pharmacist, and our very special guest, Dr. James Sita Lewis from Mercy Pain Management. Today we'll be discussing fibromyalgia. Good morning, and welcome to the show, Dr. Lewis. September is Pain Awareness Month, and a perfect time to highlight fibromyalgia, which is a common neurologic health problem that causes widespread pain and tenderness to the touch. According to the American College of Rheumatology, fibromyalgia is the most common in women, though it does affect men, too. It typically begins in the middle of adulthood, but can also occur in the teens as well as old age. In addition to pain symptoms, people often experience pain as well as fatigue and sleep issues. We'd like to remind our listeners today that our podcast, our product, our program is available on our podcast in your favorite smartphone app store. You can search for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and listen to any of our programs anytime, anywhere. If you have questions you'd like addressed to during the program today, you can either post them up on our live Facebook feed or you can give us a call here at the radio station at 330-450-1480. So, Doctor, uh, take a moment, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and your experience. Well, I am experiences. A, okay. <laughs> okay <yes. laughs> well, I practice uh, chronic pain management at uh, Mercy Medical uh, Center in Canton, and let's see, I've been employed at Mercy for about three years. But prior to that, I was employed at Affinity uh, for pain management and anesthesia for about eight years. <clears throat> So I uh, see in the paper, Affinity is going to come back in some form. That's right. Uh, we were so just talking saying, about that. Yeah. I'm excited to see them come back. Yeah, I think I think it's good. Mm-hmm. It's good. So tell us about Mercy Pain Management. Well, right now we have three uh, pain management providers. Uh, Dr. Gutlove is the medical director. Uh, Dr. Batala is also pain management um, provider over on Wales at the Jackson Stack Care Facility, and then I'm also working with Dr. Gutlove at the main hospital campus in Canton. Okay, so, so your office is in the, in the Mercy Building. Right. Okay. So what are some of the causes and risk factors of fibromyalgia? Um, is it genetics, emotional, physical abuse, PTSD, gender anxiety, depression, you know, a whole raft of things, I guess. Absolutely. It's kind of all of the above. We don't really know for certain the cause, but we have a variety of theories about what may cause fibromyalgia. We think that there's a genetic link, um, family members, um, siblings, mothers. Uh, we think that there's um, a traumatic injury that may potentially cause fibromyalgia um, as well. I remember when this first came on the scene, and it really hasn't been, shall we say, in healthcare for a long period of time. And I remember some of the insurance people, health insurance people, saying, well, this is just a, a ruse or, or, you know, it's nerves or whatever. Right. So, so we've, we've come a long way, I think, in, with this uh, disorder. Um, right, absolutely. I think, and I know in 1990 is when the American College of Rheumatology came out with the guidelines of how to diagnose fibromyalgia and there's still some practitioners doctors today who don't believe that fibromyalgia exists but mm-hmm. i think the more and more we learn about chronic pain states and the pathology and how does it work and why is it that it affects some individuals and other others is why i think we're getting a lot better with treatment and diagnosing okay. the problem interesting <clears throat> okay well, this is exciting an exciting topic for me because I feel like I interact with many patients that um, suffer from fibromyalgia. And I guess, doctor, what I'm wondering is, is at what point do you need to seek medical care? When do you realize that maybe you're just not just sore or tired or it's going to go away? When right. do, when is it when is it so overwhelming that it's time to see the doctor? Right. Whenever whenever the pain truly begins to interfere with your quality of life, your level of functioning. Typically, a chronic pain state, something that's over a three-month period of time, something that's persisting beyond, beyond a normal healing period, that's when you really want to think about going to your primary care provider first, getting uh, an evaluation, doing a thorough interview to find out what other, other symptoms or other underlying conditions might be present. Okay, and unfortunately, we don't have a blood test, do we? Right. Well, no what's blood her, tests what's her very, at all. very first symptom? The very, I think fatigue, fatigue, and um, not having the energy that you used to have, and then diffuse pain, pain that is 
extremely sensitive to just light touch doing simple chores it's a task it's extremely painful it's more pain than your average person would typically have on a daily basis um, that's when you know that something's something's wrong with the way that my body's processing pain signals maybe some of the confusers here are the fa are aging um, for one thing okay the older you get I guess the, the time <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the tired you do get, and you know if you've fallen or you've injuries or whatever in the course of your lifetime, they apparently get worse at least. So that's why I think it's so confusing here with this. Right, absolutely. A lot of people think, like you said, with normal aging, is this just normal arthritis? Is this just inflammation mm -hmm. of the joints, loss of cartilage? Um, but I think what is the most critical part is that um, everyone doesn't understand about what's normal and what's abnormal, mm -hmm. um, and. It, the key part is when it's truly interfering with your quality of life. That is when it is time to seek out evaluation. I see. Anything else you'd like to add about why fibromyalgia is sometimes misunderstood or misdiagnosed? Sure. There's, there's a big stigma attached with fibromyalgia. Um, it's a complex chronic pain disorder. And like most of our chronic pain states we train in the office, there's a stigma attached to a, a lot of the patients that we see because it's, it's underdiagnosed. Um, it's complex, it involves a variety of different symptoms that many physicians don't want to deal with, typically on a five to 10 minute office visit. So it gets very frustrating when you don't quite know what's happening with your patient, which is why I think a lot of patients get frustrated themselves. How about some treatment options and medications that may typically be prescribed for fibromyalgia patients? Um, well, right now I know there's three <coughs> FDA-approved uh, medicines um, since the 1990s. Uh, the, it's Lyrica, Savella, and Cymbalta. Those are the only three FDA-approved medications. Um, but a, a lot of the other um, options uh, outside of medication management, we also focus in on getting adequate sleep patterns, making sure you have good exercise, acupuncture, chiropractic therapy, massotherapy. A lot of alternative and holistic approaches are also very effective with a lot of the other um, FDA medications. It's almost like trying to create a complementary approach to medical care with fibromyalgia patients is, is honestly the most successful approach. So doctor, um, there is really a lot more news and in, in, in conversation about fibromyalgia and, and really in our practice and in many other areas for sure. Um, this has been around for long. how long? About 20, maybe? I mean, right. it's been a, it was around before, before then. Before but, then, right. Yeah, yeah, the, I'm sure it was around before but, then. But, but the big. 1990 is what I like to use as that official diagnostic criteria. So it's been, basically, it's probably been misdiagnosed for a long time. Absolutely. Um, you know, many, many years unknown. Sure. And a lot of the, you know, the mentality of chronic pain back in, in the 1990s, 80s was... Um, you know, learn how to cope with pain as effectively as you possibly can. Yeah. Uh, chronic pain has, even the management of chronic pain has gradually evolved over a course of 20 to 30 plus years where we're providing better options and we're, we learn more about the diagnosis and so we're able to provide better treatment options. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I've been around for a long time and, uh, you know, in, in, in the prescription drug business and I'm, I, I keep remembering that many um, uh, health issues um, 30, 40 years ago were, oh, what's just your nerves? Oh, we'll give you this or we give you that or something like that. And, right. And the fact of the matter was it wasn't just nerves. So, <laughs> right. so as we advance technologically and, and whatever, uh, treatment certainly has changed a, a right. great deal. So. Absolutely. We know this is a, this is a abnormal signaling pathway within the brain. Uh, it's a normal mm. way that you are processing pain signals. That's why some practitioners choose not to even use fibromyalgia, but they call it central pain states instead. Okay. Hmm. What about statistics? Um. So statistics on, in general, we know in the United States about uh, 10 million Americans are afflicted with fibromyalgia, and they say about 2 to 4% of the world population is afflicted with fibromyalgia. We know it affects more women than it does men as well. Um, so that's where a lot of the statistics are pointing us at this point. Hmm. More women. More women. I think it's a lot of the, you know, women in general are the multitaskers, uh, stress, taking you know, care of jobs, children, family, household yeah, jobs, yeah. trying to juggle it all. I, I think that's why women are, are probably a little bit more on the wow. on higher scale that's of interesting, effect, being affected. But, but, but that has really... the the. The women working right. nowadays compared to 20, 30, you know, whatever.
over years ago mm -hmm. um, is really dramatic. So. Right, absolutely. Well, why don't we take our first break here? You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Hi, this is Brad White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Do you feel stressed and tired? Do you rely on caffeine, crave salty snacks, have mid-afternoon lows, and camp outs back? These may be signs of adrenal fatigue. The Medicine Center Pharmacy offers easy saliva cortisol testing and nutritional supplements to help you get your energy back. Talk to your Medicine Center Pharmacist and see if cortisol testing is right for you. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has four locations in Stark and Tuscarawas counties. We're here to keep you healthy and save you money. Give us a call at 330-339-4466 for more information. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. Sunflowers are in bloom at Studio Arts and Glass. Hand bloom bowls, metal garden art, or take a class and make a dyed burlap sunflower wreath Stunning art glass pumpkins in every color and size. The Fall Festival of Art, September 14th and 15th from 9 to 8 p.m. at Studio Arts and Glass. We'll showcase area artists with fun Halloween and fall decor, food, and refreshments at Studio Arts and Glass on Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. Medicine Center Pharmacy was named the 2018 Best of the Best Pharmacy. And we'd like to thank our customers and our staff for the honor. Our 13 pharmacists in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia help keep you healthy and save money. From free kids' vitamins to compounded prescriptions and affordable diabetes care. Ask how we can help, and don't forget, we have free screenings at our pharmacies on Tuesdays. Call 330-454-8772 for more information or visit MedShopRx.com. MedShopRx.com. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Today we're discussing fibromyalgia with Dr. Jamisetta Lewis from Mercy Pain Management. I have a question posted on our live Facebook feed. So, is there a cure? I'm sorry, is, is there, there a cure? A cure? <laughs> no, there, there is no cure. I mean, cure. I, sometimes I think it's not a cure for anything. <laughs> there is no cure for fibromyalgia at all. Um, when I see patients in the office, it's important to have realistic discussion and expectations about what mm. to expect with this disease in the long run. Mm. There is no cure for this disease. It's just a matter of managing your symptoms and learning how to live a good quality of life with adequate functioning. Is there any relationship, uh, fibromyalgia, with... ALS or MS or muscular dystrophy or in any way whatsoever? Not that I have seen uh, in the literature. Um, that's why before you're even diagnosed with fibromyalgia, we're recommending that you see a rheumatologist to make sure that other disease states are ruled out mm -hmm. um, because some of these disease states can mimic the same symptoms of fibromyalgia with the fatigue, the diffuse hole, sure. body pain, muscle pain, joint pain, stiffness, sleep disturbances. Mm. So doing that thorough check prior to getting that diagnosis is critical also. How about, how about outside influences as a cause of this disorder, uh, pollution, uh, you name it, there's so many things out there. Right. They, I have seen some things that indicate environmental chemicals, pollutants, stress, anxiety, so any type of traumatic event, mm. um, those are causal relationships of what are, may cause are, are there any, fibromyalgia. Are there any... Um, um, 
occupations maybe where we, we have a large sector of these you know lung cancer steel mills you know that sort of thing a- any particular i haven't seen specifically occupation occupational hazards okay. as a big factor as to what who will develop fibromyalgia based off of occupation okay i've had patients tell me that sometimes they can trigger where they started to feel poorly back to a certain event maybe mm-hmm. a car accident maybe a uh, a family member's death, right. maybe some stressful or traumatic event um, or an accident that seemed to kind of be the tipping point. Absolutely, yes. So. I, we hear that quite a bit in the office, and and it's hard for them to think back to when this started. Um, that's probably the biggest frustrating part, that they have a hard time trying to figure it out, out also, when did I start feeling this way in my life? That makes me wonder, I don't want to, like, go down a path that maybe we're not prepared to talk about today, but it makes me wonder about how if they're carrying a big load of stress, if they've just overwhelmed their adrenal glands to the point where they just can't manage that physiological stress anymore. Sure, absolutely. So. Mental health is a, a huge part of chronic pain states in general. Uh, we know that chronic depression, increasing stress, bipolar disorder, um, those patients are at a greater risk of developing chronic pain states as well. Mm-hmm. Interesting. What about uh, retired folks? I mean, it, okay, they're not going to work every day. They're they're not they're not going through a sort of a routine, you, you know, anymore that keeps them active. Right. Any, any issues there? Any? Sure. One biggest component of fibromyalgia for treatment is they recommend increased activity. You have to exercise. You have to right. be able to get out of the house, get your body moving. That's the best way to honestly maintain the symptoms. But because of the heightened sensitivity with pain with a lot of these patients doing any type of physical activity makes the pain worse worse. so it's a fine balance that you have to try to figure out which is why we recommend water therapy um, light massotherapy just Mm. working slowly and then gradually building up to an exercise level that you're going to be able to maintain Mm. for our listeners who maybe have never experienced the pain of fibromyalgia it's been my understanding that it's been kind of analogous to tender to the touch so even if you know it can be all over your body right Mm -hmm, it doesn't have to be localized and it could even be your shirt on your body making you feel uncomfortable correct so i mean that's kind of hard to imagine yes yes that's why we describe it um as more of a central pain state we have a lot of other complex chronic pain disorders that mimic fibromyalgia with the light touch to just shoes or socks or shirts up against the skin. So um, that that's very classic for central pain states in general. And fibromyalgia just kind of falls in that category. I've had some patients that we've helped with CRPS and it's just kind of hard to imagine trying to deal with something like that, that right. danger or that um, frustrating. So doctor, for patients or listeners just joining in, um, can you speak to the demographics again for who typically gets fibromyalgia and um, what type of things that uh, they might experience and when it's time to come see you or get or talk to their primary care physician about it? Right. Well, we know that it affects more um, women than men. Um, there's no you know, specific ethical background um, when it comes to getting the diagnosis. We know that it's related to Uh, more uh, patients who potentially have more stress, um, some type of traumatic injury or event. We know that there's a genetic association. Um, If your mother or your siblings have had fibromyalgia, it may potentially run um, towards you as well for that diagnosis. And whenever it begins to interfere with your quality of life and your functioning, when it gets to that point is when you really want to be able to seek out evaluation, starting with your primary care first. Okay. Any difference between symptoms for men to women? I'm thinking heart attacks are different in men than women sometimes. So what about fibromyalgia? The symptoms are actually th- about the same when it comes to presentation. Um, I know we t- discussed earlier some men may be hesitant on revealing some of those symptoms in the office. Um, in general, uh, women are a lot more open to sharing their symptoms with me in the office. Uh, that might be probably why it might be un- underdiagnosed in men compared to women. But the symptoms actually are about the same. What about flare-ups? Are there periods of time that are worse than others? Um, yes, always around stress. Oh, okay. <laughs> Increasing stress, patients will absolutely have more flare-ups. Um, I hear this repeatedly for fibromyalgia patients in the office. They know exactly <clears throat> what the trigger is. They've hmm. identified the trigger, and they're trying to do their best to avoid it. And a lot of it involves stress, stress in the household or at work. Actually, 
even though it's a burden, I can see that as being valuable, at least if you can identify what your trigger point is, if you will. That that could be valuable, but it also doesn't make it easy to manage sometimes. Right, absolutely. And, you know, we, we come to compromises. Um, we know that there's no cure. We know that this is about symptom management. So we try to figure out, are you what would you be happy with? How many good days are you having per month versus bad days? How can we do a pain diary to really track if we're making progress or not? So that's the hard part, trying to figure out that process. I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's very individualized per patient, too. Absolutely. It's all a customized approach when it comes to fibromyalgia. There are some that are more severe than others. What about lifestyle changes and, and, and foods, and coffee, you know, alcohol, and all this stuff? Sure. I'd probably say by 80, 80 to 85% of the patients that I see in chronic pain in general are chronic smokers. Um, mm-hmm. We know that wow. chronic smoking in general um, leads to chronic pain states over a period of time because mm. of poor quality of blood flow to the muscles and then overall blood, mm. blood restriction. Um, we try to make sure patients are eating clean, getting rid of the uh, cigarettes as much as possible, trying to lead active ex- exercise, lifestyle, and good sleep patterns. That, those are the top four things we always emphasize in the office. Easy to say, but hard to do. Yeah. Right now, coffee seems to be in favor, but in my <laughs> lifetime, it's been out, in and out, in and out. Right. <laughs> so what's the deal with coffee? <laughs> caffeine I, drinks. I like, haven't you know. seen anything caffeine related specifically with okay. chronic pain states. Okay. <laughs> Not yet. I just, I mean, there's all kinds of issues with these drinks that are highly caffeinated. You right. Know? I forget the name of, of them, but sure, like the monster drinks. Yeah, my yeah, right. you drink lots three, of sugar three, and three, right. four, so, yeah, you're, you're lots of stimulants. Around, <laughs> jumping around a <laughs> <our> room. Right. <laughs> Because we know there are in certain inflammatory foods, you know, the, the sugars, the white powders, the flours, yeah. uh, those are the things we know, and we try to tell patients, try to avoid those mm. foods that will cause inflammation in the body as well. Mm. This is kind of off the, off the chart, but there's a, a relatively new diet. It's been around for a keto diet. No fruit, no breads, right. no, no whatever. What does drastic uh, change in diet, is there any... causative factors there with I I do know and I have seen this in the office that when patients choose to eat clean less inflammatory foods Mm -hmm. in the body they do notice a significant difference Mm -hmm. in their overall quality of life and sleep patterns Mm -hmm. I know nutrition is key yeah. When it comes to dealing with a lot of these disease states we see in the office well you know everybody kind of lives for lunch on a on a fast meal or, right. or you know something greasy or or, or whatever right and, and not not fruits and vegetables and things like that so mm-hmm. it's just we're right we've raised a generation or more of people that kids sure that are, that are that are used to that food right yeah. there's some primary care practices that are um, beginning to incorporate actual putting um, foods in their offices and so at the end of their evaluation, yeah, okay. let's go over, talk to the dietitian. These are your selections of healthy foods. This is a good recipe to repair. Here's what repair. works and here's what doesn't exactly. work. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, that is where I think we honestly have to start going in, in medical care, providing okay. it right there in the office. Bottom of the hour, time for the news. Thanks for joining us this morning on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. It's that time of year again. It's time to protect your family against the flu virus. Hi, this is your pharmacist, Brad White, from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Flu vaccination should be a priority to you and your family, so take the steps today to protect yourself. Visit any of our Medicine Center pharmacies and get your flu shot. And don't forget to stock up on items to boost your immune system, like probiotics and multivitamins. The Medicine Center pharmacies are conveniently located in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. We understand the one-size-fits-all approach doesn't always work. We do customized compounded medications based on your doctor's prescription to match your specific needs. Hi, I'm your pharmacist Brad White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. 
Do you use or need customized compounded prescription medications because of allergies, special formulations, or need an easier way to take your medication that isn't available? Many physicians choose to prescribe a medication that is not commercially made and requires a pharmacy like ours with special equipment and training to prepare a capsule, suspension, cream, or tablet. Are you sensitive to lactose, dyes, or need a sugar-free suspension? The Medicine Center Pharmacy is here to help you. Every day we prepare custom medications for infants, adults, and pets in our PCAB accredited compounding lab. Call or stop by the Medicine Center Pharmacy today at 551 West High Avenue in New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. Sunflowers are in bloom at Studio Arts and Glass. Hand blown bowls, metal garden art, or take a class and make a dyed burlap sunflower wreath Stunning art glass pumpkins in every color and size. The Fall Festival of Art, September 14th and 15th from 9 to 8 p.m. at Studio Arts and Glass. We'll showcase area artists with fun Halloween and fall decor, food, and refreshments at Studio Arts and Glass on Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. Hi, this is Brad White, your Medicine Center pharmacist. Are you paying big bucks for a little blue Viagra pill? There's a better alternative. Starting at only $4 per dose with a prescription from your doctor, the Medicine Center Pharmacy can prepare a Sildenafil or Tedenafil tablet that melts in your mouth for an affordable price. This allows you to take care of business and still have money left over for dinner and a movie. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has four locations in Stark and Tuscarawas counties. We're here to keep you healthy and save you money. Give us a call at 330-339-4466 for more information. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Hey, I'm your host and pharmacist, Paul White. Today we're talking about fibromyalgia with Dr. James Settle Lewis from Mercy Medical Center Pain Management. Let's get back to the show. Speaking of glasses, if I don't put them on, I can't read the next sentence. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's the next question? I would, I would think that exercise would aggravate this Uh Disorder, no? It it can initially. Um, that's why when I talk to patients initially about exercise, start light. Start light. Start with something in the water that takes away the resistance on your muscles and your joints. Mm-hmm. And then just gradually, gradually build up and not get frustrated that you have to start at that level before you can get up to a level that you're going to be more comfortable with. So, So water, so swimming, but what about... Okay, you're in the pool, and you're, you swim back and forth, real light exercise. You jump out and get in the hot tub, or, or is that good? Or yes, it is. <laughs> it's it's almost. You, remember, you're. It's almost like I tell patients, you're you're in the conditioning stage. It's almost like any other sports with any other activity. You're mm. trying to recondition your body every single time you do it. You're desensitizing your body so that it's getting more and more accustomed to that type of activity. So about, the more you do, the more gain you get. So what about cold water therapy? Cold water. So there are some patients that do prefer cold water um, versus versus warm. Hmm. Um, there are certain pain states you have to be careful with, not just fibromyalgia when you're talking about cold and hot water. But hmm. for fibromyalgia in general, I haven't seen anything that states that you have to stay with cold water or hot water. Hmm. Um, it really kind of varies from patient to patient with this disorder. So it's sort of a preference on the individual. Correct. They have to figure it out sort of on their own. Absolutely. So. Um, I know we talked about swimming. Is there other, other exercises that, that um, are useful? Any, I know for specifically, I know for low back pain, we focus in on something called McKinsey exercises. But if you work with your a physical therapist, starting at the very beginning, they'll they'll incorporate certain exercises that are low impact that are good to start with, so they'll mm. know how to gradually build up. And a lot of these they they can then do at home. No, I know Mercy has a center in, in North Canton. Right. Um, could I, if I had fibromyalgia, could I go there and would they establish a, yes. a plan for me? Or Yes, they have water therapy on the Whipple Avenue site and then they have okay. different therapists that will then transition that patient to land therapy okay. and then provide other options as well for ongoing hmm. treatment. Okay. So, so we don't want to stay with water therapy forever or well some patient some patients will i think at the end of the day it'll probably boil, boil down to cost if it's cost effective then sure. most patients will stay with it but if not then they'll try to do things that that they can handle on their own at home okay you know a store in Louisville. there's a marvelous ymca over there and uh, we were just there for a program a little while ago and nice pool and all that mm-hmm. sort of thing 
Do we work with any uh, YMCA's, YWCA's, anything like that? I know, I know. I I, ha- I encourage my patients to do that. So, because some of their insurance companies have the Silver Sneakers programs yeah. Yeah, that okay. they have at a lot of the local YMCA's. So that's a great starting point. Silver Sneakers is all low impact. Where you're either sitting in a chair, or working in the water. Um, those are ideal exercises to start with with fibromyalgia. Okay. But we know we do know. If you don't do anything, if you sit at home and you stay inactive, the pain will get worse. So you've got to get out there and you've got to get your body moving. Did we talk about this earlier in the show, what the percentage of the population has fibromyalgia? Right. For the, I know the United States, it was 3%. So you're talking okay. about 10 million Americans are that, affected that, with that fibromyalgia. That we know of, I suppose. That we know of, correct. Yeah, okay. okay. Hmm. It's interesting how um, I hadn't really thought about physical therapy for fibromyalgia to be quite honest so it's interesting to hear that you can have medical medicine and non-medicine solutions to help you deal with the situation because i know there's a lot of people that are passionate about they don't want to take a medication right so if you can find a way to make some lifestyle changes that's exciting and encouraging absolutely what um you mentioned swimming what um type of land exercises might someone do just walking or right walking um simple uh, stretching exercises um, you know it's all about low impact as many low impact exercises that you can think of is is an excellent starting point and there you know m- many people don't understand what low impact you know really means so starting with your physical therapist one on one is the best starting point okay so i noticed on the commercial break we've had some people on facebook sharing our program with some friends of theirs so I'm assuming that there are people that either are suffering from fibromyalgia or maybe have an interest in learning more about it. So what advice would you give to our listeners who might be living in with, living with it on a daily basis or have a loved one living with it on a daily basis to be to help them understand? I, the best advice, honestly, is, is not to get frustrated um, and to understand that this is a debilitating, uh, complex, chronic pain state. A lot of people don't understand that it involves an abnormal pathway in the brain, So, but do understand that this is a disease. There is no cure. and It's just going to take a period of time before you can figure out a good solution that's going to work for you or your loved one that you're caring for. You mentioned stress earlier can be a trigger, among other things. So I guess it's important that if you have a loved one dealing with fibromyalgia, you don't dismiss it as them just complaining, right. which would add to stress. Right, absolutely. Um, but what about um, what about resources? Um, I, I does Mercy have any literature or classes or support groups for patients with fibromyalgia? We we mostly have literature in our office that we share with patients, and then there's um, a website that I usually refer them to. There's a website called practicalpainmanagement.com. Um, excellent resource. It actually has a, a journal that patients can subscribe to that talks about many other fibromyalgia uh, and hmm. other chronic pain states. And then there's the National Fibromyalgia and Chronic Pain Association, which is also a nonprofit organization that has excellent information, up-to-date information with fact sheets, treatment options, um, and hopefully uh, any potential new treatment options that are, are, are down the road here for fibromyalgia. Okay, that's excellent because sometimes it's challenging to find credible information about certain conditions and it's one thing to have personal accounts from people but it's another to get facts from the source so that's great so i understand that september is pain awareness month and that's got to be a huge a huge topic um one of the things i think it's hardest for us in the pharmacy is is helping people who are suffering and in our environment now it's difficult sometimes to help people when there's so much scrutiny about what kind of pain do you have and grading it and things of that nature. So my understanding is Mercy is having an open house. Right. Yes, we're having an open house. It's going to be on September. It should be September the 19th. And it's going to be from 4 to 6 p.m. over at the Mercy Health Center of Jackson. That's on um, Caritas Circle in Jackson Township, which is the Mercy Jackson Stat Care. So from 4 to 6, we're going to have the open house, and then we're going to have a physician panel discussion at 6 p.m. on the second floor conference room. So anything else? So we're in for two hours, pretty short time to run all those people through there. Maybe we should run that longer. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm thinking about all the people with the pain and, 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 and you know that sort of thing. And it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what kind of um, what kind of patients should attend to get more information? Do you have um, any recommendations? 
you know, any family member, friend, caregiver um, that suffers suffers with a chronic pain state, um, that's what the open house is for, to come out and uh, meet uh, myself, Dr. Gutlove, and Dr. Batala. We'll do presentations about fibromyalgia. One's going to be about lower back pain and can't remember what the other presentation will be about, but there's going to be three uh, topics. uh, And we tried to focus in on the three topics that we typically see the most in the office. Mm. Um, So, and we will also have a couple of other things also at the open house. So let's see, Mercy's going to have a tour of the Mercy Sleep Disorder Center, um, as well as Mercy Therapy Services. Uh, The therapy services will be providing free dry needling demonstrations Uh, They're going to be doing giveaways, helpful information, free screenings, um, such as the Wound Center, tobacco treatment, smoking cessation, respiratory care, and diabetes education. They're going to be providing foot screenings, pulmonary function tests, carbon monoxide measurements, and much more. So lots Mm -hmm. uh, lots of uh, interesting and free free things for the community. You guys have a lot of services there. To be honest, I didn't realize, you know, I guess you say stat care, and I don't really... I don't think of some of those things. So it sounds like some of those services are there all the time, I would guess. Yes. These are so, services that are, are always being provided at the stack here in Jackson Township. How do you determine carbon monoxide uh, level? Blood? Uh, it's typically by blood, okay. yes. Like a, a, an arterial blood gas reading. Okay. Hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, our stores do every Tuesday screenings through Mercy. Okay. Uh, they come in, and, and, and the next one coming up in September or October, excuse me, is... Uh, uh, breathing. They're going to do pulmonary function pulmonary tests function. Right, in addition absolutely. to their lipid panels and yeah. things. Yeah, so that'll right. be neat. Right. That'll be kind of cool. You are listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. The warmer weather is here. Hi, this is Brad White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Perhaps you've gotten the urge to venture outside and clean up the garage or do some yard work, resulting in muscle aches and pains. If you have sore muscles or aching joints, you may want to consider a prescription pain-relieving cream available with a prescription at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Our pharmacists can work with you and your physician to get topical pain creams that can be rubbed directly on the source, reducing inflammation and pain. Topical creams avoid troublesome side effects and dependency issues that can be caused by oral medications. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has an accredited compounding laboratory, and it is your source for custom medications. Custom compounded pain-relieving creams, available only at the Medicine Center Pharmacy, where wellness begins. Visit us at MedShopRx.com for the pharmacy nearest you. That's MedShopRx.com. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. It's that time of year again. It's time to protect your family against the flu virus. Hi, this is your pharmacist, Brad White, from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Flu vaccination should be a priority to you and your family, so take the steps today to protect yourself. Visit any of our Medicine Center pharmacies and get your flu shot. And don't forget to stock up on items to boost your immune system, like probiotics and multivitamins. The Medicine Center pharmacies are conveniently located in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. Hmm. 
Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We're talking about fibromyalgia with Dr. Jameis Settle-Lewis from Mercy Pain Management. We have to get back to the show, but first I have to do a little commercial break. Since I am a member of the Canton Rotary Club, I'm mentioning the fourth annual Canton Rotary Oktoberfest is just around the corner. Mark your calendar for Thursday, September 20th from 4 to 9 p.m. and plan to come down to the Market Square in downtown Canton. Resale tickets, pre-sale tickets are only $25, include 20 tastings and a souvenir tasting glass. Grab a ticket for your designated driver, too, for only 5 bucks. You'll enjoy music, food, and, of course, great beer from the Canton Brewing Company and many others. Visit CantonRotaryClub.org for tickets and additional information or call 330-452-2882. Proceeds benefit the Canton Rotary Foundation. So, um, where are we at? Well, we were going to talk about, um, we've talked about um, FDA-approved medications. We've talked about physical therapy, and you mentioned some dietary lifestyle changes. Um, Dr. Lewis, do you have some other recommendations for patients that are new therapies on the horizon that they could consider Mm -hmm. if... um, they need something different. Yes, I, I definitely wanted to share other complementary and alternative therapies that um, some of us as providers are doing in our offices. And some of you may have heard of this, but it, it is called low-dose naltrexone. Um, this is a medication that we've actually been using for patients who actually struggle with um, drug addiction and alcohol abuse, but we're finding that this medication is also effective for certain chronic pain states. So fibromyalgia is, is one of them. Um, in addition to low-dose naltrexone, we also are doing IV ketamine and IV lidocaine infusions uh, that have also been very effective at reducing the amount of sensitivity that patients with fibromyalgia suffer with. And those infusions are typically 30-minute infusions that are done in the office. They're typically done every four weeks, and then we monitor to see if you notice a difference with the reduction in your pain levels each month. So these are these are... Uh, critical things that I that I think are also an important part of the overall regimen uh, when you talk with your providers about being able to give you some other options. And then don't forget, fibromyalgia is also one of the 21 uh, qualifying medical conditions for medical cannabis um, in the state of Ohio. So I know the program is not um, going to be available by the deadline in September, but I know hopefully before the end of the year, that will be another option that um, fibromyalgia patients can also pursue for treatment. Kirk Shearing spoke to the Rotary Club a couple weeks ago, and I believe what he said was he felt that by January uh, it should be in place. Okay. Um, but there were some, I guess they left laboratories involved in this and all of the several other sort of sections that, uh, um, involved in getting this product to the marketplace. And there's only one or two labs so far and some other things. And lots they, of regulation. They need, yes. they need some more stuff. Uh, right, lots of regulation. Involved, so. Right. So that's what I got from, from that conversation. Right. Uh, has it changed? I don't know. So, But um, I encourage anyone who's listening, just um, be willing and, uh, and open to don't be afraid to talk to your, your primary care provider or your chronic pain management doctor about doing other alternative options outside of uh, the norm that we've always had for treatment over the last 10 to 20 plus years. Uh, we ha- I, you know, we, we've got to be willing to look at other options and treatments uh, for patients. The I think other options are going to be more effective in the future. It's just a matter of time of getting the evidence to support it long term. I'm curious about the lidocaine infusion. I, I, why does that, I guess, why does that work? Right, so, so lidocaine is a sodium channel blocker. So we know that it helps to block certain action potentials, which is the way that nerves are conducted oh, into the brain and the okay. spinal cord. So it's a great way of desensitizing that nerve so that nerve will stop that firing. Yeah. So we know that fibromyalgia involves the brain, the spinal cord, trying to control those pain signals. Mm-hmm. So that's another classic way of diminishing that, that do, nerve from firing. Do we have a, how long does it last, do we know? Or? On average, we know that ketamine has a half-life of about 14 days, which is yeah. why we have them come back every four weeks to give us feedback on their infusions. Same right. thing with lidocaine. Lidocaine is short-lived. On average, it begins to wear off around two weeks, and then they come back for further evaluation every four weeks. For some fibromyalgia patients, just is the pain just totally excruciating and you know, not life-threatening, maybe, but I can't do anything. Sure, you know? absolutely. I've had um, many people that come in extremely debilitated by this. Mm. Uh, they can't 
think they're they have this uh, something called fibromyalgia fog they can't focus um, they can't do their jobs that they used to be able to do they can't interact with their families they can't raise their children mm-hmm. uh, some some are extremely um, debilitated and, and incapacitated because of this mm-hmm. hmm. Very interesting. well and I guess I'd just like to put a little aside in there you mentioned low dose naltrexone and i've had the opportunity to work with some patients in our pharmacy in new philly where we have our accredited non-sterile compounding lab and we've been able to customize dosages for physicians like yourself and it's been exciting to see something that can be cost effective and help people that isn't a narcotic they don't have to be fearful of a whole bunch of side effects and you know there's a lot of different things that can work and whether it's you know i think it probably takes a lot of things it takes dietary it takes lifestyle modifications but um it's nice to know that you have alternative options and you're embracing them as a practitioner i know sometimes patients are frustrated sometimes because maybe their physician that they've talked to just isn't aware of all the different options and in your specialty you have the privilege of being exposed to all these different things and that's one benefit of seeking out your primary care doctor but don't be afraid to follow up on that referral because your primary care physician will often refer you to someone who is a specialist and like dr lewis a specialist in her area she can see a number of different treatment options and help you find the right one for you because each therapy can be customized yes absolutely you know, the, the panel discussion you're going to have at your open house? Yes. Is that, will all your doctors be there? Yes, all of us will be there. Okay. And Dr. Batala will be talking about knee pain. So mm-hmm. it will be knee pain, lower back pain, and fibromyalgia will be okay. the topic of discussion. And we're going to have plenty of time at the end of the panel discussion to questions. answer questions okay. from the audience. It's a free event refreshments, yeah. uh, door prizes. So it's an excellent opportunity to come out to see mm-hmm. what are some new and exciting things um, dealing with chronic pain states. It's very valuable to be able to talk to a doctor without sitting in the office, and, <laughs> you, you know, mm-hmm. nervous, well, it can be nervous, nervous, nervous yeah. no all, white coat all, all around. Yeah. <laughs> Blood pressure doesn't go up. <laughs> and, and not having to get the information off the internet. You know, you know, everything on the internet is true. You That's know. right. <laughs> so, I just, Don't believe that. <laughs> I know. Oh, goodness. Oh, that'd be great. Um, I hope we can get there. Um, so, can you give us a little bit more information uh, about the practice and where we can get you on the phone to make an appointment? Can we could we refer ourselves to you? Uh, things along that line. Sure. Right now, we are only doing physician referrals um, in all of our locations. In addition to the location that we have in Canton at the main hospital and Jackson Stack here, we also have a pain clinic in Alliance. So there's okay. three locations, but we only um, will do physician referrals at this point. Now, is the pain clinic in Alliance in the hospital there? or No, it's at another uh, separate independent site. Okay. Yes. Okay. So if a patient wanted to call you or, or you say there's no, you know, they can't refer themselves directly, but can you give us a phone number for the... <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me about that. <laughs> well, okay. And I don't have the phone number specifically Mercy, on they, me right now for call, Mercy. If they call Mercy Medical Center, yes. they can refer uh, to your department. Yes, they can. And, uh, and most primary care providers um, that you see now, they know the information. They know how to put the referrals in. It, it, sure. it really starts, starts by people having that open discussion and not being afraid of asking uh, for, for more treatment, more complex treatment. Do, do you see... Uh, um, do you see a, a, an immediate change or an upcoming change in in therapy for fibromyalgia? Or is it things on the on the on, on the, the edge horizon. here or on the horizon? I honestly, I know Pfizer is about to come out with a, a, a non narcotic option mm, for yeah. chronic pain, and fibromyalgia is at the top of the list for the new drug that they're going to be coming out with next year. Mm. Um, I am honestly hoping medical cannabis will be an excellent option because we know in the literature medical cannabis is more effective for neuropathic pain states, nerve pain states, which fibromyalgia is right there at the top in that disorder um, type of category. Well, one of the side things about cannabis and marijuana and all this sort of products that are stuff that's out there is that there's a constant drumbeat that that it basically long-term causes brain damage is it well i and know how do we wrestle with that you know i think any any chemical that affects the reward pathway of the brain you yeah, have okay. to be cautious with 
uh, marijuana, alcohol, nicotine, uh, opiates, you have to understand the long-term risk of using any of these uh, chemicals. We know that if they're used as an adolescent, when your brain is developing is the most critical period, which is why we tell adolescents to avoid all of these chemicals mm-hmm. during that time period because your brain is still developing. Yeah, I think that's the article I just read. That was the, the issue was the young people and yes, and high school and you know and that sort of thing, college. Mm-hmm. But, hmm. Very interesting. So, any final remarks? You got thirty seconds. Um, I always want to say thank you for having me down here for this program. I think you guys do really interesting topics and in getting that yeah. well, the valuable first information person, out there. You're the first person to touch on the <laughs> medical, <laughs> medical marijuana thing. You know, sure. And, I hope you'll have more and, and, future and we, yeah, talks about it. We, we need to get more info on that to the people for sure. Sure. So. So thank you. Okay. Thank you for being on the program today, Doctor. Dr. James Settle-Lewis from Mercy Pain Management. We'd like to remind our listeners, if you suspect you have a medical issue, please contact your health care provider. Thank you, our sponsors, Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, and, of course, our technical producer today is John Bazika. As always, we thank our listeners for joining us on Health Matters with Medicine Center Pharmacy. We are a local Health Mart pharmacy, caring for you and about you. Have a healthy week, and we'll see you again right here next Friday on News Talk 1480 WHBC. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, your pharmacists, Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now at MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. Be sure to join us next Friday at this time for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. The preceding program was sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies.